seat. It's my informal topic, so we'll start with that one first. And if people come in, that's fine. Okay. So uh, let me shut the door so that I'll disturb the office staff. I'm Dr. Piana. Um, I've been working with hormones and demography and all that fun stuff for over 30 years now. Um, this is Kim. She works with us at BTI also. She's our nurse practitioner and um, she works directly with hormones and patients as well. So maybe she'll have something to add if she feels like it at some point. All right, so let's get started. Um, let's, what are hormones basically? Uh, hormones they regulate your metabolism. So we have the nervous system. Everybody understands the nervous system. And you should if you're in a chiropractic office, right? Because that's what they do here, is they make sure your nerves are functioning properly. But hormones, um, boy, we really don't work with them or hear much about them other than if somebody's on you know, bioidentical hormones or if you're stressing me out, I'm having a nervous breakdown, that sort of stuff. But hormones are like a second nervous system, so to speak. Master, one of the controllers of the body. Uh, but they're not as direct because we can't see them like we can see nerves or the brain and brain stem and all the connections because they kind of just float around your body, right? But they do uh, create a lot of metabolic process, uh, energy production, and pretty much general well-being, okay? So if you've ever been in a phase of your life or you are now where you don't feel good, you don't have energy, it's probably a hormone disruption is what you have going on, most likely. Um, of course, we know about reproductive health and hormones, and uh, it's funny, reproductive health doesn't apply unless you get to a certain age. So just your sexual wellness, we could call it, uh, or just well-being of all those hormones that run not just the sex organs, but your skin and all your bodily functions for the most part. Uh, the stress response plays a key role um, in maintaining homeostasis in the body. So. We know that if we are getting attacked by a lion or a tiger, we need to run, okay? That's why we have a stress response, where if we get stabbed or cut, our body doesn't bleed to death. The stress response helps us in that case. What we have to remember, though, is that in our environment here that we've evolved into over the past X amount of time, we, we have stresses in our life that we can't get away from, okay? Or, or at least we don't think we can get We perceive that we can't get away from them, so this, the stress response is 24-7 on some people. So that's called like the fight or flight mechanism. Okay, you've heard that before. Um, and, and that's where your body just constantly is under fight or flight. And then mood and cognitive function, uh, hormones are in control of all your mental health and wellness. Okay. So we get into the point where we start trying to change these from a uh, pharmaceutical standpoint. We start taking different hormones for the brain, hormones for whatever, and we overdo it and we throw off the balance of hormones. And we'll get into some other ones here in a minute. When it comes to human biological hormones, when it comes to the sexual system, reproductive system, um, estrogen is a really big one and it's kind of misunderstood. People don't even realize that in the human body there are three types of uh, estrogens in the body. We'll just call them E1, 2, and 3. You can see the names here. Estradiol is the, is the prominent one that when women um, are lacking, um, later in life, lacking hormonal balance, estrogen dominance takes over. This is the one they're lacking, okay? Um, E3 is only really during pregnancy for the most part. And E1 is the predominant hormone after menopause. So to just sit there and like say, I'm just gonna take soy for, uh, you know, estrogen, that is really probably not the right avenue, okay? So we'll, we'll explain a little bit more about that later. And then progesterone counters your estrogen. And the balance between it is crucial. Pro, uh, pro, progesterone counters the proliferative effects of estrogen. So one of the bigger concerns about estrogen, other than just, let's say, mood or sexual function, um, is the fact that estrogen is prolific creating fibroids, fibrosis, um, and, and cancer, not just breast cancer, but different types of cancer. So there's, you know, as we get into those years, from 35 to 60 or whatever age group that is, 40 to 60, you have to start thinking about that and balancing some of those out. So estrogen dominance basically um, happens 
naturally. It happens to everybody. It's normal. Okay, so what, we're, what a lot of doctors are trying to do is trick it. You know, let's make it look like we're not estrogen dominant. Okay, let's throw in more progesterone. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Um, but here's the spread between estrogen and progesterone. Here, when you're younger, 25 to 35, there's still a spread. You're still estrogen dominant. This is where the confusion comes in. Um, you're just closer together with the progesterone, okay? But as you get older, the body stops pretty much making progesterone for the most part um, when you're into your 50s, 60s, and 70s. So the spread gets a lot longer as estrogen also drops at the same time. Estrogen will drop along with progesterone, but progesterone goes down almost to zero while uh, est estrogen will still produce from the fat cells and, and whatnot in your body. So there is a greater spread is the key. So they're not balancing out each other. That's why as we get older, we get the fiber cysts in the body. We do get breast cancer, uh, uterine, ovarian cancers, and things like that. What happens if you're over 70? <laughs> yeah, well, it just keeps going. Actually, you, for some reason, there is a tip up on the estrogen at that point. Progesterone will just stay at almost zero. Estrogen. Um, well, should you have progesterone? You should not naturally, you should not. So if you're looking at it from a natural perspective, remember, the medical world is kind of trying to anti-age you, which is in some ways good, right? Mm -hmm. In some ways they overdo it, okay? And in some ways they don't know enough information to, to even do it in the first place. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you remember back in the 60s and 70s, they were giving you marriage urine, estrogen from marriage urine, and it, was, it created a whole rash of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Because when you took the estrogen at 70 or 80 or whatever age, it gave you all these wonderful bodily functions back again that people enjoyed. Uh, but at the same time, it, 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 it was too prolific. And they didn't know that. And now they know it, so they don't give as much. And they give progesterone in balance with it, which is probably the right thing to do. I'm not here from the pharmaceutical end of things. You'll see in a minute what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's what happens as you get older, right? So <clears throat> when you're in that, the, the, the other thing I do want to tell you um, and we'll probably hit it here in a second, is that there's already a disparity between estrogen and progesterone, but it gets worse with environmental factors, xenoestrogens, and uh, other factors uh, that, that you get exposed to, from chemicals to estrogen disruptors, endocrine disruptors. We'll get into that just a little bit here. But when you get into this phase, it creates all this. I mean, everything. Basically, forget, this is pretty much a lot of women right here that are estrogen dominant. They, they, they can relate to this image here and know that that's <laughs> what they're feeling, okay? Um, so endocrine disruptors is what I wanna talk to you about. And this is one thing you can control and minimize the estrogen dominant effect on the human body. Um, first off, an endocrine disruptor is, uh, they interfere with the natural hormone functions and balance, okay? They can lead to imbalances affecting all of mental health, all those things we talked about. Um, so common sources of these are plastics, pesticides, and personal care products. And you've heard a lot about that, I'm sure, from, well, if, if you pay attention to this type of healthcare, if you've heard of it before, you know, drinking out of BPA plastic water bottles, uh, cosmetics, and everything like that. So these have endocrine disruptors, which act on the receptors of the estrogen receptors. So you can look like you're estrogen dominant, like, and I'll show you on the thermology in a minute here, what that looks like. And <coughs> Your normal hormones could be normal, or normal for you, but yet you're being bombarded by all those estrogen disruptors, so you light up like a Christmas tree on thermography, okay? And that's what we're gonna try to eliminate. You can get hormone tested for your actual hormones. You can't get hormone tested for endocrine, endocrine disruptors. So in other words, like I'm saying, you could do saliva, blood, urine, just those three are actual blood, you know, physiological tests of measuring chemicals in your body. And those could be completely normal. But you could be estrogen dominant based on endocrine disruptors. Okay, and that's where people kind of don't understand how it works. So if you talk to even your medical doctor, they really don't understand that part of it unless they've been trained in it themselves. But most of the time, no, your, your hormones are fine. Okay, and, and the best one out of these, by the way, is the uh, urine testing. The Dutch test is one of the best ones out there. Blood, you can measure your hormones and look good. Problem is, it shows bound and unbound hormones. 
and you don't know which ones are working for you and which ones are just bound up and they're too big to use. Saliva is fairly good because it shows you your free hormone levels at the time that you do the test. The thermog I'm sorry, the urine test will show it over a 24 year uh, period, time period, hour period. Uh, and the thermography will show the physiological effects of hormones on breast tissues and fat cells. And so here's an example of what I'm talking about with thermography. You can see in the before picture, these are the after pictures here. And <clears throat> this person um, had some hormonal balancing done medically. This is what they look like. You see all these little blotchy patterns here? We call them leopard spots. That's, what, that, th that's the Christmas tree I'm talking about, getting lit up like a Christmas tree. When you see those blotchy areas, those are uh, estrogen receptors that are hot, heated. This thermography looks for heat. Dark here is hot, white here is, is cold, just so you understand. So you can see the blotchy areas are all hot. After their treatment, you can see how they all went away, right? And we test these patients year after year after year after year, and you can see that they still have estrogen and dominance, 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 and then all of a sudden they do a treatment that works for them, whatever it is, and then you can see that they're back, okay? So that's one way to use thermography. Here's another, this was a 29 year old woman. You can see in here how she has this. This is actually more than just estrogen dominance. As we said, estrogen has a prolific effect, meaning it's a building up of tissue effect. And in this case, she most likely was developing breast cancer right up in here. Because you can see it getting hotter and more consolidated. She went on a whole life change program, changed a lot of things in her life. And a year later, she looked like that. So much better. You're not ever gonna get away from a little bit of estrogen expression, usually, okay? But to go from that to this is a big difference, okay? And that's what you're looking for. Any kind of reduction and certainly not an increase. So in order to do that, like what she did, you wanna bring in all the good stuff, the good clean water, the clean foods, the clean diet, um, healthy fats, omega-3s. So that's the stuff you bring into your body, uh, including these nutrients. Um, and then nutritional testing is important in my opinion, making sure you have all the nutrients. Some people don't process nutrients the same way as, not everybody pr uh, processes them the same way. So there's a testing called SBN, which is test your nutrient levels and see you know where you're at. And I know they do that here at this office. You can get that done if you want. Um, and then for stress, we haven't talked about the stress response yet, but we will. Adaptogenic herbs are pretty important. I mean, I mentioned stress, but I'll show you in a minute how it works with hormones. They kick out the cats, right? With an extra S on it. So it's caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, sugar, and stress. <clears throat> caffeine is liquid stress, in case you don't realize that. It, it, it's direct fight or flight in your body. So as soon as you drink it, it hits up those stress receptors, uh, receptors and starts burning, uh, creating cortisol production. Cortisol is the fight or flight hormone, right? Uh, alcohol affects all the functions of the body, including the liver and hormone uh, metabolism. Tobacco, don't even need to say anything about that. And the nicotine in there is also like caffeine as well, of course. Sugar, yeah, that's just like pouring gas on a fire, right? If you're already stressed out, just you might as well light it up, right? And then stress triggers cortisol production affecting overall hormone balance. So when cortisol is high, hormone production is shy. Remember that. So if your cortisol is hot, cortisol is high, and if you come from caffeine, tobacco, sugar, mental stress that you can't get away from. Let me ask a question. Is this only applicable to uh, female hormones? No. Or uh, it, no. male as well? Mm -hmm. And also um, like um, TSH? You know, um, yeah, so you know, we're just focusing on this, on the hormones that you know everyone likes to hear <laughs> about. But it's all connected to your pituitary gland, your thyroid gland, uh, your adrenal glands are impo super important. Uh, this is just a little dab. Hopefully you remember a little bit of this, that you can apply something today, not just listen to it. But, you know, one of the best things now is with the internet and YouTube videos is you can take some of these keywords, plug them in, you know, like cortisol, you know, fight or flight, uh, adaptogenic herbs, things like that, and you can learn more and more about it. There's plenty that you can learn on the internet about this. This is just a little take home for you guys that you, you'll be able to apply some of it, right? Uh, but men and women alike, men are a little different, obviously, but when it comes to cortisol and thyroid, like you said, and 
Same principle. Though. And e and even testosterone, <laughs> estrogen. Men men are super. Um, re that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, influenced by e exogenous hormones, uh, meaning you know the the chemicals, the dry cleaning, the detergents, the plastic water bottles. And there's plenty of men that show up estrogen dominant. And men make estrogen anyway, but point being, it's, it really shows up on our thermography sometimes when they've been exposed to these toxins. And as soon as you kind of clear that out, you see a whole change in the person. And, and not just their mental awareness, but their overall health too. And then there's natural. Uh, so we're going in order, you know, bring in, kick out, I'm, I'm all about kicking out the bad stuff, bringing in the good stuff, and letting the body respond. And I mean respond over a year, you know, see what it does. But if you want to take the next level, the uh, phytopharmacology, such as black cohosh, red clover, there's all kinds of herbal products you can do. Don't do this on your own. Make sure you go through a naturopath or somebody that works with this type of thing. Okay, because you could be playing with it too hard and you know throwing off balances. Even though it's natural, it's from a plant, you know, that's, that doesn't mean that you should just start doing this on your own. And then there's, you know, skin creams like pregnenolone and DHEA that you can put on your skin. And th those are the precursors to the hormones. One of the biggest problems is that when you burn too much cortisol, you start burning from the reserves of your precursors to hormones. And these are the, like the 19 hydroxy uh, progesterone, which is the precursor directly to the 17 hydroxy <coughs> progesterone, which is what you use. And all your other, you know, good chemicals, good hormones, testosterone. Uh, and then of course, men will aromatize testosterone into estrogen through, you know, stress, alcohol, and different things like that. So there's a whole lot of understanding that you should do on this. The integrative approach would be to combine diet and lifestyle first and then work on the phytochemicals. And then last, which people a lot of times jump right into, this is supposed to be the last resort, would be the pharmacological approach where they use pellets or they use skin creams or they use injections uh, for you know test testosterone replacement you know things like that. So you know there's bioidentical from the porcine which is the pig is what they use usually they create bioidentical compound and pharmacies use this and and whatnot. Um, but the gradual progression would be elimination first, natural method second, and drugs as a last resort. Right? Makes sense. So you're not just jumping into it. And, and, and one thing for sure, you definitely can get misled uh, from these hormone disruptors thinking that those are your body's hormones playing havoc on you, which it usually isn't. Usually it's an outside hormone that comes in and gets you. All right, so we're done with this topic. Um, you guys are, uh, we'll take a short break if you wanna either get more food or put that away or do something, and then we'll get into our topic of thermography. Okay, and if you have questions in the next couple of minutes, I can answer them too. Okay. I'll grab those. Yep. Oh, thank okay. you. Thank and there's you. lots more. Mm -hmm.